a quick YouTube search for DIY ceramic coating brings back thousands, if not tens of thousands of results. In this video, I'll summarize what the majority of these videos instruct for DIY ceramic coating, showing the process start to finish on my brand new 2021 Honda Civic Type R Limited Edition. I'll share links in the description for the best YouTube resources that helped me in this project. Hopefully this video and the resources in the description help you do your own DIY ceramic coat job. I'll show you the final results of the project right now, then we'll get into some of the supplies you'll need to ceramic coat your own car, and step by step the general process to ceramic coat your own vehicle. This was my first time ever working with ceramic coating, so I am definitely not a professional. Let's talk about the supplies you'll need first. The two largest expenses from a supply cost standpoint is the ceramic coating itself and a dual action polisher or DA polisher, which will be necessary in the paint correction stage. In my project, I opted to buy two DA polishers, a mini DA polisher with a one and two inch backing plate and a more standard size DA polisher, which fit a three to six inch backing plate. As the video goes on, you'll see when I get to the paint correction stage why it was a really good idea to have two DA polishers. I think if you're ceramic coating a larger vehicle such as a truck or an SUV, you can get away with a single dual action polisher and just buy different size backing plates. There are several consumer grade ceramic coatings out there for you to choose from. I went with C Quartz UK 3.0 and C Quartz SIC or SIC. Seacourts recommends a two layer process, so I did a base layer of UK 3.0 and a finishing layer of SIC, though it could have been done two layers of the UK 3.0 or two layers of the SIC. I just thought I would mix it up for my project. I start off the wash going over the entire car with a pressure washer, water only, knocking off any loose dirt and getting the entire car wet. Using a foam cannon attached to the end of my pressure washer, I hit up the entire car using stripping soap. If your car is pretty dirty and needs a heavy wash, it's not a bad idea to let the foam soak, remove it with a pressure gun, then re-foam it, and then hit it with the mitts. In my case, because my car was brand new and had very low miles, and I had already washed it once before, I just did a quick foam and now I'll hit it with the mitts. Ideally, you wanna have two buckets filled with water and one of the buckets mixed with stripping soap. Before you continuously wipe down your car, dip your microfiber mitts in the fresh water, then dip it in the fresh water that's mixed with the stripping soap and proceed to wipe down the foam that is residing on your vehicle after you use the foam cannon. It's ideal to wash your car when it is not in direct sunlight, which is why I started the project on this particular day when it was heavily overcast. However, in classic Florida summer fashion, it started to rain and the sun came out. But luckily, I had already finished washing my car with the mitts and the foam cannon, so just pulled my car into the garage for the next stage in the prep process. After washing your car and removing all the soap while it remains wet, you can now spray down the vehicle with iron and tar remover, although in my particular case, I didn't use tar remover because the vehicle was brand new. After letting the iron remover sit on the wet vehicle for about five minutes, I then used microfiber towels to wipe down the entire vehicle before eventually pulling the car out to completely spray off with water, as you'll see here in a minute. Some professionals recommend drying off the car and then applying the iron remover, but the most helpful video that I found recommended spraying the iron remover into the wet car and working it into the paint to get the most effective results and that's the method that I followed. The iron remover will react to contaminants and fallout by turning purple which you can kind of see here in this video. 
after spraying the iron remover into my wet car and rubbing it into the paint, I pull it out here to spray it down and remove all of the iron remover and get it completely cleaned off. To dry my car, I've always used a corded leaf blower. I go around the entire vehicle with the blower and then finish the drying process off with microfiber drying towels. After completely drying the car, it's time to pull it into the garage and wipe it down head to toe with isopropyl alcohol mix. This prepares the paint to be paint corrected using the DA polisher. After wiping the car down with the IPA mix, you can clay bar your car, especially if it's older or has more miles on it, but because my car was brand new and I was happy with the results after using iron remover, I did not clay bar my car. After wiping the vehicle down with the isopropyl alcohol solution, you'll want to use some automotive masking tape to cover any trim in areas where you will be using your DA polisher. After taping off the areas that have plastic or rubber trim, you'll want to take a look with a bright LED light to identify any areas that will need a little extra TLC in terms of paint defects or imperfections. This is a perfect example of where using the mini DA polisher came in really handy. Now I'm sure I could have used the larger DA polisher which fits a 3 inch backing plate but here I'm using a two inch backing plate on my mini polisher and it was absolutely perfect for spots like this. For the majority of the car, I used a light cut pad with Meguiar's polish, but in areas that had deeper defects or imperfections, I used a medium cut pad with Meguiar's compound. Overall, I'd say 95% of the vehicle, I used polish with a light cut pad. Anytime I used compound, I would hit the same spot again with the polish to remove any hazing left over from the compound. Here's another example of where the mini DA polisher came in handy. Here I'm using the 1 inch backing plate as the Type R has lots of little tiny finished paint areas that are very intricate with the body lines and body panels, so this really helped as opposed to using a 3 inch or even larger backing plate and pad. Here I'm using a 5 inch pad on the rear hatch glass. I used a 5 inch pad on my larger DA polisher for the hatch glass as well as the front windshield, the hood, the roof, and a few other miscellaneous areas across the vehicle like some of the doors. Remember after every application of DA polishing to spray down the area with the isopropyl alcohol mix solution. This keeps the paint clean for the ceramic coat process. This was my first time using a DA polisher and I didn't have any issues at all in terms of burning my clear coat or creating swirl marks. I just took my time working in small sections, applied a light to medium pressure, and everything worked out accordingly. One of the main reasons I decided to take on this project was after I found a reputable place that I trusted to do a ceramic coat, they were not very close to my area, they were hundreds of miles away, and the cost would have been about $2,000 for a full ceramic coat and ceramic coating my wheels. You can see this is obviously a lot of work to do on your own, but if you can manage it over a long weekend like I did, it's definitely possible to do on your own and you can save $1,000 or more in the process. The entire project took me about 16 hours total, and that breaks down by doing 8 hours of paint preparation and paint correction, 4 hours of ceramic coating the vehicle and the glass, that's 2 coats, and then about an hour per wheel doing 2 coats of ceramic coating on each wheel. So that's 16 hours total. I definitely have a newfound appreciation for professional car detailers. When I was originally quoted $2,000 for my full car, I thought that was a little high, but having gone through the process myself, I think that's actually a very reasonable price, all things considered.
Now we're finally on to the ceramic coating stage after the paint correction is complete. Here I'm adding my first coat of C-Quartz UK 3.0, working in small sections at one time, going up and down, left and right. You'll want to give it about a minute to flash or bond to the paint before removing it with edgeless microfiber towels, which is something I listed as a supply you'll need in this project. To prevent high spotting, be very thorough when you're removing the ceramic coating after the ceramic coating has had time to flash. You'll want to go over the area that you applied several times with your edgeless microfiber towel to remove all of the excess ceramic coating. And just be very thorough, take your time, and using ambient lighting, you can sometimes identify high spots if you did miss any places. I was very thorough with each application process to remove that I never really had a problem with high spotting. After about every three to four body panels or areas, it's recommended to throw out the micro suede applicator. It starts to harden from the ceramic coating drying out and when it gets hard, it becomes not as effective and probably dangerous for your paint. So it's recommended to just throw it out. You'll also want to dispose of your edgeless microfiber towel after using it. I found that I used two towels per application and essentially just use your judgment feeling the material to see if you can tell that it's hardening. I only used two edgeless microfiber towels per application of ceramic coating, but the micro suede applicator I basically threw out after every two or three body panels. Finally, after finishing two layers of ceramic coat on the car, I moved to the wheels. Now, while I sprayed the wheels during the initial wash of the car, I never gave the wheels an actual thorough washing outside of just spraying it with soap and water. So here I will use stripping soap, give it a thorough wash, and then decontaminate the wheels with iron remover. Here I've sprayed down the wheel with Iron X and you can see a little bit of purple forming. I will give it a wipe down with microfiber towels while the wheel is wet and the Iron X is absorbing into the wheel and then I will give it a final spray down. After spraying off the wheel and removing all of the Iron X, you'll want to dry it and give the wheel a good wipe down with the isopropyl alcohol mix, and then you can finally begin the ceramic coating of the wheel. At times I would remove the bar which the micro suede applicator goes around to get into the tiny crevices of the wheel. I would apply ceramic coat on the outside of the wheel, let it bond and flash, then remove it with the microfiber edgeless towel. After that, I would turn the wheel around and apply ceramic coating on the inside of the wheel well before doing a final removal of the ceramic coat from the inside of the wheel. For the wheels, I repeated this process twice. I added the first layer of ceramic coat UK 3.0 and about 45 minutes to an hour within that first coat and removal, I would add a second layer of Sea Quartz Sick.
Finally, after 5 days of work and 16 hours total, I pulled the car out of the garage to take a look at the paint up close, and while the lighting at this time of day isn't great, you can get an idea of just how good the paint came out after adding two layers of ceramic coat. This is the kind of lighting that you can use to identify high spots. The advice that I found online and on YouTube was that lighting that is not from direct sunlight but kind of overcast gives you that best chance to look at different angles and identify high spots, although in my case I didn't find any. This will wrap up my DIY ceramic coat project. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Definitely like and subscribe if you found this interesting, and I will be putting out more content on my limited edition Type R, as well as a longer term review of the ceramic coat and how it holds up over the course of time.